Hi everyone, it's Mindy here today for Lawn Fawn and in today's video I'm going to be making a magic picture changer card. This time I'm going to have my lighthouse light up. What I really love about these magic picture changers is you don't have to always use the before and afters. You can look through any of your stamp sets and use those to have a changing scene which is what I'm going to create today. I'm going to be starting my card by doing my background first. I find this is easier when I want to create a whole scene on my card, not just in the picture changer window. So I'm starting off by doing ink blending. I will be doing a lot of ink blending in this. I'm starting off with Lawn Fawn White cardstock, which is not only Copic friendly, but is great for ink blending as well. And this is the Salty Ocean Distress Oxide. I'm also using a mini round ink blending tool. I typically like to use my blending brushes, but when I'm going to be coating an entire area, it's just a lot easier to do these mini blending tools because I'm not quite worried about ending with a soft blend. I just want to lay down a bunch of color, which is what I'm doing. And I also find things blend together better when I lay down color first and then I'll come back and work on the blending. My next color is a blueprint sketch. Once again, I'm starting at the top, working my way down, and I'll just get a little bit lighter of a hand uh, about halfway down. I decided I wanted that top just a little bit darker, so I brought in chipped sapphire, and I'm adding that to the very top. Now I do go back and forth with my blend blending tool just to soften up those blends a little bit. And I'm also going to do this on a second piece of cardstock. So I'm going to have a frame uh, with this that I'm using the picture changer die on. And I want both of my pieces to match. So I do a lot of duplicates, which I do speed through because I do the exact same thing on them. Now I need a stencil because I'm going to do some tone on tone ink blending. So I die cut out the puffy clouds from white cardstock. And then I'm lining that up on my background and I am using chipped sapphire on this first one. And when I removed that stencil, I honestly was surprised at how well that turned out or how much I could really see the clouds. So I'm going to go down my ink blended panel with that uh, variation of puffy clouds and just blend a little bit. You can see I'm using my blending brush to do that. I'm not getting as harsh of a line when I want to do just some soft ink blending and I'm not applying a lot of pressure to this. Now I just continue moving down my card panel with those clouds just uh, varying between the two different ones that I have and then I will go ahead and do that on my second panel as well. I didn't ink blend as much on this one because my uh, area that I'm die cutting is not going to be that big. So just varying between those two different clouds and adding a little bit of that tone on tone look. Then I'm going to take some water and I'm just spritzing both of these backgrounds at once. This is just going to add a little bit of interest to the background, kind of break that up a little bit and then just dabbing that up with a paper towel. Once that's dry, I'm going to take my frame and I'm going to die cut that from my uh, bigger panel. This is the window where our picture changer is going to be. So I want these to line up flush straight with the edges. I want them to be even because I'm going to use this as my card base. And when you're attaching any purple tape or post-it tape, whatever low tack tape you're using, try to put it in the part that you're not going to use so that if it does tear, it won't tear your actual card base. You can see mine is going towards the inside window because I know I'm not really going to use that. Once I have both of those pieces die cut out, you can see these are lining up and I know it kind of looks a little weird right now, but it'll get better. And I love how the whole thing is ink blended and has those clouds in the background and really match up. I'm just going to take one of those scrap pieces and die cut out my tab. And now I'm going to work on the actual scene for the front of my card. I'm going to be using Blue Jay cardstock and the stitched simple wavy borders. So I'm lining up, I have them next to each other, and this is just going to help me gauge how high I want that wave to be. Once I'm happy with it, I just hold it in place with some low tack tape. And when I line that up, 
I there's going to be a picture changing in that middle portion. So just kind of ignore that right now. But that is going to be our background piece. So I'm taking my other wavy border, lining that up on my main card panel on how high I want that to go. I want that to cover the bottom of my frame. So you can see I'm layering these up as I go. I'm not attaching anything. I'm just getting an idea how high everything is going. And this will be my bottom layer. This is actually going to be the one I'm going to do a sentiment on. So that'll be the last piece that I attach on my card front. Now I'm also taking this and just for a little bit more interest, I am going to be using the just stitching double rectangle. Now you don't have to do this. This is totally optional. I just thought it'd be really neat to have kind of that stitching going around the edge. And I will do this to all of my pieces. So I'm going to use that front panel. And then I'm also going to run my Blue Jay cardstock that I had die cut those wavy borders from. And I'll have all of those match up with that just stitching die. So you can see everything matches, everything is lining up. And then I know I'm going to have some boats in here from the smooth sailing set. So I'm actually using the sandy beach accent and I'm going to die cut out just a little area where I can tuck my boat in. So once I'm happy where that is, I'll hold that in place and run that through my die cut machine. And that will create just a nice little pocket area in the front of our card. Next, we'll be working on our actual picture changer image. So these are the images from Smooth Sailing. I took my magic picture changer and I lined it up in my Misty. This just helps me when I'm lining up my image. Sometimes I would stamp too high on the cardstock and not leave enough room to actually die cut that. So I like to line it up in my Misty, place the image over that area and pick it up with the door of my Misty and then just remove that die. So that's just personal preference. It's something that I found easiest for me to work with. I did start out by creating a mask for my lighthouse and then I can stamp that down on the cardstock with the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink which is Copic friendly because I'll be using my Copic markers for this. And now same thing for my second one. Now I had to move my cardstock up because I wouldn't have left enough room to actually die cut it from. So that's why it's just a little helpful for me. You can certainly use an acrylic block if that's what you're comfortable with. Then I attached my masks to my lighthouse. This is using a the back of these post-its are a full sticky sheet. So the whole thing will stick down and that will allow me to stamp my sandy beach or the hill that my lighthouse is sitting on. This little sandy hill came from the stamp set Life is Good. And I also want to create a mask for that. Now, when I cut this out, you want to save both pieces because I want to ink blend both areas. So save both of these pieces and I'll show you what that's for in just a moment. And then I can go ahead and attach this first one down on my sandy beach. I'm going to ink blend a sky background that's going to match what my front card panel looks like. So I'm bringing in that salty ocean and I will do the blueprint sketch and chipped sapphire. And I do the same thing on my other panel as well. They're going to both look exactly the same. It's just one of them is going to have the light beaming from the lighthouse. So going in a little bit with the blueprint sketch, I'm kind of bringing in that die to check on how much room I have or how high I need to go. And then the chipped sapphire. You probably could leave out that third color, the chipped sapphire. You don't see it too much. And then just some flicks of water to break up that background just a little bit. Now I did have one oops while I was creating this. I was a little distracted. And on this second piece here, which is supposed to have my light beam shooting out, I forgot to stamp the actual light beams that is on the stamp set. So I needed to improvise just a little bit. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to take a piece of that full back sticky note, these post-its that Lawn Fawn carries, and I cut it right in half. And I'm gonna angle it. I needed to keep this one layer so I couldn't cut anything to add there I had to keep it the one layer so I'm angling that so it's going to be a ray of light shooting out 
And the way I needed to create that ray of light, because if I added yellow, that wouldn't have worked uh, for ink blending. So I'm actually going to bring in the Yeti pigment ink. I just kind of put some down off on my mat a little bit there because it is uh, very thick. So I, I kind of brushed it off on the side a little bit to take some of that excess ink off. And then just taking a blender brush and adding that in my masked off area. So once I have a little bit there and I have that completely covered, I'll remove those post-its. And so I was really happy with this turned out because I didn't want to start over. But the whole point was to have this beam of light shooting out from the lighthouse. And then adding flicks of water to this one as well. I got a little bit carried away with the water. And with pigment ink, you do want to let that dry for just a little bit. So you can either set it off on the side to air dry or you can hit that with your heat tool. And then I can start removing my masks. So I'll remove that sandy beach and we are going to take that other half of the mask we had cut out and I'm going to add that over the top. I'm going to ink blend uh, a little bit of brown ink for my sandy bottom there or my hillside. I'm going to use vintage photo distress oxide with a blending brush and I'm going to have it darker towards the bottom and lighter as it gets towards the top. So I'm just not going to apply as much pressure uh, as I get closer to that post-it note. I'm going to keep that really light handed. And then start removing it. And I did do the same on the other panel as well. And I'm starting to remove my masks for my lighthouse. Now I can come in and add a bit of color with my Copic markers. So I'm going to color the lighthouse in the typical colors. I have a red here. I'm using R39, R24, and R22. Just lightly blending out a little bit. For the white areas, I'm going to use C2 and C0. I don't color those areas in all the way. And then my yellow is a Y17 and Y11. And then I can start assembling my magic picture changers. So when you run these through the die cut machine, they do create those score lines. So I'm just folding in those score lines and reinforcing it with a bone folder. These side panels, we want to fold in and then reinforce with the bone folder. We will be adding some double-sided adhesive to this and we'll do the same thing on the other side. I've kind of pushed in a little bit to get that started and then just creasing that down really well. And then I'll kind of open those up and I'm just going to go ahead and get my double sided adhesive attached. This is going to go on both sides of these strips. So I'm attaching that to the inside. I'll flip it over and attach that to the outside. And then once those are pushed down right uh, really well, I will close up the inside ones. So I just removed that release paper and push those down. Now I almost forgot I wanted my pull tab to match the rest of my card. So I'm just going to bring in that chipped sapphire really quick and just color that one side in. And then I can finish the assembly. So I'm just going to put that through the area that's cut there. And then we can start popping the front panel to the back panel. And they'll just slide into those slots and kind of giving that some test runs. You can bring in your powder and kind of dust it over the area to help that slide a little bit and making sure the mechanism runs really well. Now these are some images for the front of my card to finish off my scene. I did speed this up just because it is uh, quite a long video. And these are the images from Smooth Sailing. So I have a couple boats here and the little critters. The Copic colors I used for my boat are E27, 25, 23, and 21. My critters I colored in E43, 42, and 41. And my clouds I added a little bit of color with an E42 and 41, I believe it was. Just to give it a little bit of definition, I also stamped my sailboats onto some really rainbow scallops paper. And then I'm going to cut those, just the top, the sail part off. So I'm going to paper piece these onto my boat. 
Now I can take my images that I colored. I'm going to line up the coordinating dies and die cut those out. The clouds, I actually got that off of the Butterfly Kisses stamp set. They had a couple variety of clouds on there. Once those are die cut out, I can go ahead and attach my sails and my little critters. And I'm just using the liquid glue to do that. Now for the assembly, I'm going to start with the magic picture changer. So I'm going to take that frame that I had die cut earlier. I'm just adding adhesive to the corners and then along the short edge. That way nothing catches and our picture changer will move freely. So I'll attach those. Just make sure you're lined up straight and nothing is peeking off on the side. And everything still works. Then I'll also go ahead and attach this frame. And this is totally optional. You could leave this off. I just thought it added uh, a little bit more to the card front. Just using adhesive in the corners to attach it. And then using the liquid glue to attach my little area so that indicates to the recipient to pull this out. And then we can start uh, working on building our scene for our card. So I'm starting with a piece of white cardstock for my base. I'm just going to run Tape Runner on our first frame that we'll lay down. This was the first piece we had die cut. And then I'm going to start layering up my waves. So this is going to go behind because we're going to pop up our picture changer with foam tape. So I'm starting with that bigger piece that I had die cut out of the Blue Jay cardstock. That'll go behind everything. I layered that picture changer with the foam tape remove the backing and then I'm lining this up in that window so it's hiding that open area but our background is all going to match and I just I love that look when you can have that scene and yet you still have that picture changer. So for my uh, second layer of waves I added just a little bit of foam tape making sure that it's all even and then I'm just going to kind of uh, pop up that little accent area we had created and I just use my tweezers to kind of pop that open and I'll go ahead and add some liquid glue to attach that. You just want to make sure that when you're adding your liquid glue you might be safer to use your tape runner. Um, that way you're not risking getting that on your picture changer. And then just tucking in those bolts. And I always go back and double check and make sure I didn't glue my picture changer. So everything is still working great. And just a little bit of glue there to tuck in my boat. That is a pretty tight fit there. So I don't think I need a lot of glue to hold that in. Then I'm going to finish it off by adding some clouds to the top here. And tucking some in behind our frame. And just using some liquid glue to do that. Or a tape runner whatever you prefer. And one more, I didn't quite leave enough room there to tuck it under, so I'm just gonna trim off the excess that's hanging over. And then we're gonna work on our sentiment. So I didn't attach that bottom wave yet because I knew that's where the sentiment was gonna go. I'm just gonna line that up in the middle of it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up with some embossing ink and not pushing down very hard. I don't wanna squish my letters. And one more time just to get a really nice good impression. And then I can sprinkle on the white embossing powder from Lawn Fawn. And tap off any excess. I did prep this with an anti-static powder tool as well just to make sure um, I didn't have powder sticking everywhere. And then I'll go ahead and heat that up with my heat tool. Now I did also stamp a message in the inside of my card. I unfortunately forgot to take a picture of that, but I did stamp one of the sentiments off of the uh, Smooth Sailing stamp set, and it just says, I'm here for you. And I used Blue Jay cardstock to stamp that. That just matches the rest of my card front. So once my sentiment is done, I can go ahead and just use a tape runner to attach that to the front. And I just love how this goes from the plain lighthouse and then it's lighting up. I think that's just really great to be able to use any type of stamp set for your magic picture changer. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and for stopping by and I'll see you next time.